Greetings, my name is Dr. Robert Gish. We're gonna to talk today about hepatitis B and how this might affect you if you're infected or why you should be tested or how hepatitis B may affect a loved one or a person that you are supporting. Let's talk about the liver first. The liver is in the right upper abdomen, as you can see on this diagram, and is associated or near the stomach, spleen, gallbladder, and intestine. The liver has been recognized as a major organ dating back two, three, four thousand years. The liver is where hepatitis B resides and does its damage. Bigger picture, liver, gallbladder, spleen, and then connections with the blood vessels between the stomach, spleen, and intestinal tract. When we're assessing for hepatitis B, we're going to look at liver tests. Remember, liver enzymes are not liver function tests. We're going to look at AST and ALT to see if the liver is inflamed or what the immune activity is against hepatitis B. Or if the enzymes are high and a person doesn't know they have hepatitis B, those tests should be performed. But we also look for hepatitis B in people who are from different parts of the world where hepatitis B is endemic. Asia, lower part of Africa, the Mediterranean, Eastern Europe, lots of places where hepatitis B exists. And just by being from that area, being born in that area, hepatitis B testing should take place. Liver function tests, if these are abnormal, that means a person's got terrible and late stage disease. We're trying to prevent this. Although hepatitis B is not curable, by suppressing the virus with the correct medications, we can reverse liver dysfunction and make a person much better and prevent death, transplant, and cancer. But this requires an early diagnosis and linkage to care. Here's what a normal liver looks like after a liver transplant, just so you have an idea what the surface color and characteristics are. If you cut across that surface of the liver, again, you should just see a few blood vessels, no significant scar tissue. Under a microscope, a normal liver has this portal area where blood vessels are, but there really should be minimal inflammation and very limited scar tissue there. Again, a normal liver, a little bit of scar tissue that provides a skeletal framework, central vein, blood flows this way. We'll talk in a moment about what hepatitis B can do to a liver. Here we have inflammation. Hepatitis B virus may come in, bring in these pus cells, start killing liver cells, and eventually lead to serious liver damage, such as cirrhosis or cancer. Hepatitis means liver inflammation, but once you know that you have the diagnosis of hepatitis B, that's when you know you have an infection, you're infectious, the proper education, proper consequences, and management need to take place. So, Hepatitis B management is somewhat complicated. Work with an expert provider. Consequences through inflammation, more scar tissue, cell death, cirrhosis, transplant, and cancer. 30, 40% risk in chronic carriers of these terrible outcomes. Picture of what cirrhosis looks like compared to a normal liver. Another picture of cirrhosis. We don't know the cause, but again, a lumpy, bumpy, hobnail type surface. Another picture of cirrhosis. We can stage patients through doing liver biopsies, but we often stage indirectly with imaging and blood tests, which we'll talk more about in just a moment. Once patients have cirrhosis, they get a dilated portal vein and a big spleen. On every ultrasound or CT scan, we get measurements of that portal vein and spleen size to help determine if people have advanced disease. Cirrhosis, complications, no matter what the pathway, what the cause, people can go into a coma, develop fluid on their belly, bleed internally, or go into kidney failure. You can get there with hepatitis B, alcohol, fatty liver, hepatitis C, this is the final common pathway that we're trying to prevent. 
This is what a patient looks like who has cirrhosis. Lots of changes on physical examination, and this is what your provider does when they look at you in the clinic. Please listen to our separate presentation on cirrhosis. Liver biopsy, gold standard, including for hepatitis B, but most patients we decide on treatment based on DNA, ALT, and other lab tests. So I'm gonna guess maybe one out of 10 hepatitis B patients actually needs a liver biopsy. If we do a liver biopsy, we do it with a small needle under ultrasound to make sure we don't hit the gallbladder, lung, kidney, or colon. And if we're gonna do a biopsy, we're gonna do two passes to make sure we have adequate tissue for staging and grading the level of disease. Here's a poor, small, fragmented biopsy. Here's a medium biopsy. You can watch a liver biopsy on YouTube for your edification. Hepatitis B can result in liver cancer. Here's a CT scan here. Here's a real liver cancer on somebody who had part of their liver cut out. If we're looking for hepatitis B, we're gonna check everybody for surface antigen. And if that is positive, that means they have an infection. Anti-HBS, if it's found alone, means they're immune. And this is what you would find after vaccine. But if core antibody is positive, that means exposure. And often you're gonna match that with a surface antibody or surface antigen to stage their final disease. This antibody being positive means that patients who might get chemo or anything that changes their immune system may reactivate. So think about this panel, work through this panel with your provider, interpret each test and the tests together to decide on diagnosis, prognosis, management, linkage to vaccine, or linkage to care or just monitoring. Once somebody is surface antigen positive, we then go and check the level of virus in the blood. E antigen tells us if it's a wild type or mutated virus. We're gonna look for markers for risks of liver cancer. We're gonna get an ultrasound with spleen and portal vein size, a blood count. And then we're gonna do advanced testing, genotype, core and pre-core, these are for mutations or variants. We're gonna look for co-infection with Delta, Hepatitis C, and of course you're gonna check an HIV test. Look for Hepatitis A immunity, determine if vaccine is needed. Hepatitis B can cause other conditions, including something called cryoglobulinemia or vasculitis. Ask your provider if you have any evidence of a systemic syndrome including something that might hurt your kidneys. Hepatitis B treatment, we sometimes use injection therapy called interferon, but this is really only one or 2% of patients. Right now, the standard of care is to use one or the other of these two first line therapies, tenofovir or entecovir. These are very safe medicines, highly effective in terms of getting viral control meaning virus in the blood is negative, and those are the patients who have lower risk of cirrhosis, cancer, transplant, or death. The adverse events or side effects of tenofovir or entecovir are less than 1% per year with correct monitoring. In conclusion, hepatitis B is a serious worldwide disease affecting about 2 million people in the U.S., 400 million people worldwide. It's treatable but not curable. We're advocating to test all high or moderate risk people. In other words, really low threshold to test. And make sure you connect with a provider who's an expert in hepatitis B test interpretation and management. Thank you very much.